Eagles single game tickets went on sale 10 a.m. today. Of course, it did not take long for them to get snatched right up. Birds with a pretty loaded slate. Eight home games, of course, this season. There are some good ones, including primetime matchups with the Vikings and the Dolphins, plus national TV showdowns with the Cowboys, Bills, and 49ers. Can't and a wait. Chris can't wait. Christmas Day gay day game against the Giants. Those are going to be pretty good as we welcome you here to Birds Huddle, powered by PointsBet, alongside Bear Brooks. I'm Amy Fiddle. The link always rock and be. We know that. But some of those games, you know, there's only two that are 1 o'clock. A lot of prime time, a lot of national TV. It's going to be rocking this season. You know, you have to pay a cost to be the boss. Yeah. That means you have to make sure you'll be front and center on everybody's TV when they're sitting down at dinner time. People watch supper and, I mean, people eat supper and watch football. That's what they do. And you're going to get those type of games when you're good. We're the second best team in the NFL last year. Of course, we're going to get that type of success. We're going to have to, you know, go out there and prove it this year. Mm -hmm. And we have to just do it on primetime TV. Love Extra it. tailgating time was always good. The, the, <laughs> the fans really kind of get a little lathered The natives up there. will be restless. Listen, pay the cost to be the boss. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm going to put that on a bumper sticker. It might be for sale. Uh, let's get to Barrett's three-point stance. Up first, Darius Slay and Matt Patricia can get along just fine. Patricia and Slay famously had a really big falling out in Detroit, but now Patricia is part of the Eagles coaching staff. This week, Slay was asked how the relationship is, and he said, quote, cordial. It's another day at the office. We both got the same goal, just going out there to compete and win a championship. So that's the main focus. So Barrett, do you think that they've actually buried the hatchet? Me, me. Well, I'm, I'm not going to say they buried the hatch. What I will say is they won't be going out to tea for, with tea and crumpets. They won't be yeah. at, you know, Starbucks together. They will not be having wine together. But what they will have is a working relationship while at the Nova Care Center. And that'd be, that's, that'll be where they spend the most of their time at. He is coming in, and he's like a defensive specialist. He wants to come in and, 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 and really get this um, defense going in the right direction. So he'll have to interact a little bit mm -hmm. with big play. But as, as long as he doesn't call him Slay, I think, I mean, uh, call him Darius, yeah, that's I think important. they'll be all right. If he comes out, we ain't talking about, hey, Darius, can you do It's going to be a problem. But I doubt that happens, seriously. I think the main thing that happened between those two is I don't think he wanted, you know, Patricia wanted to really give him the just due that he deserved while he was there. Mm -hmm. He has always been a great cornerback. He comes here and just solidified it even more that he was up for a uh, fantastic cornerback. Uh, he could play the game just at a high level, even at the age he's at right now. So just give him his just due. He will be a pro bowler this year. It's not like he's lost a step yet. He's so daggone competitive that mm -hmm. he's going to have to be out there playing every single play. And plus those younger guys, they see what he's yeah. doing. They want to make sure that they kind of, you know, go out there and, and, and mold themselves after the way he plays. I love watching him play because he's so aggressive. He's so fast. He runs the routes for the, um, for the receiver. He plays in front of him. He's a great man-to-man -man type of cornerback. He's always going to get the best player as far as wide receiver on the field. He deserves that right. He deserves that respect. Matt Patricia, he better give him his respect while he's here. But, hey, as long as they're winning, everything is yeah. cool. If he's not winning, it'll start to smolder a little bit when you're losing. You don't want that smolder to come, you know, and, and rear his ugly head. You got to win. Everything, it cures all ills when you're winning. To have a little bit of a chip on the shoulder, Slay does, because he knows that Patricia maybe didn't think the most of him when they were in Detroit. That's got to help. Amy, it won't be a chip. It will be the Rock of Gibraltar. It was going to be a huge chip on the shoulder. He said, he's going to say stuff like, I told you this from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I've been this good, you know, so... I mean, I, I like it. I yeah. love the competitive nature. I love how he's going to go out there and establish himself. And once again, one of the top defensive backs in the country. All right, second stance from Barrett. Fletcher Cox still has plenty left in the tank. Today, our Eagles insider Ruben Frank wrote a good piece about Cox and said, while he's no longer at that all-pro dominant force, he's still a top-notch player. And Barrett, when you look at it, the numbers really back it up on, on Fletcher's part. Well, absolutely. You know, uh, just say what you want to say. Fletch has still got explosiveness. He's got great lateral quickness. He's got now old man strength, you know, and that's big. You know, people don't understand what old man strength is. Old man strength is guys like Leslie O'Neill had, Charles Haley had, Pat Swilling, Sweet Swill, you know, uh, Leon Lett, Jerry Ball. All mm. these guys were just strong at a point in their career where you just couldn't move them. If they didn't want to go somewhere, they'd stay where they are. They were still quick, fast, and explosive. That's exactly what you have for Fletcher Cox. He's got that old man strength now. 
added on to with him being one of those guys that, you know, one of the best in the game. He wants to be talked about like he's one of the best in the game. So he's got to go out there and prove it. And I think Fletcher will definitely do that. Fletcher Cox is still an explosive guy. He could play just as well as anybody in the league. And plus, he's going to be taking less reps this year, mm -hmm. which means he has more to give towards the end of the game. When an offensive lineman, they start getting tired. See, people don't understand. We stay in, as an offensive lineman, we stay in the game the entire time. The, the defensive linemen, those guys switch in and out. Yeah. We stay there. So if you let him go in the end of a game where this other guy's tired, he can go out there and wreck shot. So I, could, I mean, I can see. He will be one of the top guys in the NFL because he's got that veteran sweat savvy, mm -hmm. swag, whatever you want to call it. He'll be great out there. And I think it's great that Fletcher came back for less money in a system where he's going to have to play less, but he's going to get more defensive output while he's out there. Yeah, he's almost kind of redefined part of his game to take advantage of Absolutely. the things that he can do now, right? Absolutely. Now, you know, it's going to be hard trying to block him because he has a sense of what's going on around him. He's seen everything. He's played thousands of snaps now. So, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. He's going to prove that this year because he knows what they're trying to do to him now. He understands what offensive coordinators are going to say. All right, we're going to block Fletcher this mm -hmm. time. You know, you're not going to be able to double team him, triple team him. Now he's going to get the one-on-one -on -one block, and I see Fletcher go out there and making it happen. And not those 70 reps a game like he was. Yeah. Now it's going to be right around 40 reps a game. And when you, you're talking about that, less reps, it would certainly work for Brandon Graham last year, less reps. Career high in sacks, double-digit sacks. Ah, da, da, I mean, ah, da, da. That's I mean, a, it's a good formula. Just, yeah, you, you can't stop him because you don't know when he's going to be out there. Then when he's out there, it's already too late. Yeah, they're really fresh. It keeps <laughs> him that way. It's worked very well. Well, staying with Eagles defensive tackles, our final stance for Barrett. Javon Hargrave is making quite the impression with the 49ers. They gave him a four-year, $84 million deal this offseason. Check out this quote from Nick Bosa on his new teammate out there in San Francisco. Quote, I feel like people give him his due, but people really don't know how good he is overall. I feel like he isn't quite talked about in the Aaron Donald top echelon, but I think he played like that last year and throughout his career. I mean, that is high praise. Hargrave Pro Bowler, we know that. You're looking at Aaron Donald, who is a three-time defensive player of the year. Is he on that level? During passing situations. All right. You know, Hargraves is one of the best to ever do it in the middle of that defense. He gets up the field. He explodes up the field. It's hard to block a one-on-one. -on -one. And he's one of those guys that moves and, 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 and is when he's in front of you, and bam, he's gone. He's up the field and out the way. The only thing about Hargraves, he's praising them right now as far as they're in shorts and, and shirt, T-shirts, and he's just running past all of his alignment because they can't really block him. He'll be great on passing down. Third down, you're going to get Hargrave's best. Well, what about first down? Mm. What about second down? When you got off the line and coming off and teeing off on him and, 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 and dry blocking him 10 yards down the field and dumping him on his head. That's what happened last year. We couldn't stop the run last year. And a lot of times we couldn't stop the run. I'm not going to say it's just one person. But it was a lot of the time you take a double team on Hargrave. He's not standing up to that double team or he didn't want to or he felt like Saxon would pay bills. It, evidently it did, $84 million. But he did not want to stop the run, and we suffered for it. That was like the Achilles heel. That's why we wanted the big fella to come out and play. That's why we, you know, we had to go out and get into Dama and Sue and those guys because he couldn't stop the run. He couldn't stop a double team. He would not stop the run. So there's definitely a yin to his yang. But he's got to make sure he plays both ways. He does have two pro bowlers playing linebacker behind him. Mm -hmm. He didn't have that here. But I'm just saying, he just does not play the run well or he doesn't want to play the run well. He's getting high praise from his, his teammates. We'll see him coming up. Yeah, on pass and downs and shorts. <laughs> I love it. Much more birds huddle ahead. Here's the playbook for you. It's on tap. Our Ashton Sullivan goes one-on-one -on -one with DeAndre Swift on getting reacclimated to his hometown and his early takeaways from his time with the birds. Plus, we discuss how the hierarchy in the running back room will shake out this season for the Eagles. And former Pro Bowler Chad Ochocinco with some interesting diet advice for Devontae Smith. <laughs> what to eat? Stick around for that.